Hello, my name is Carlio Posena. I'm William Bellini. And I'm James Taylor. We are Team 24. And this is the analysis of a slider crank mechanism and the synthesis of a four bar mechanism. This project is comprised of two different parts. Part one is the analysis of a slider crank mechanism, which is shown in the figure above. And part two is the synthesis of a four bar mechanism, shown in the figure below. For part one of the project, the slider crank mechanism analysis, there are two unknowns, theta 2 and theta 3. The driving input of this mechanism is R1, but its displacement varies from position to position. So it does not have a fixed value. The main component of R1 is its velocity, which is 16, 16 inches per second and is used to drive the mechanism through its position. Because R1 does not have an acceleration component, the motion of the slider crank is continuous and constant. The other known variables are the link lengths R2, R3, R4, the link length between points Q and S, and their respective theta values. A slider crank mechanism is similar to a four bar mechanism, but the only difference is, is that a slider crank mechanism has a crank and ground member of infinite length and is also joined by three revolute uh, joints and one prismatic joint. For the position analysis, uh, the loop equation, or rather the closure equation, uh, RP is equal to R2 plus R3 is equal to R1 plus R4. Those equations are only have value when it's broken down into its uh, x and y components, which are done, uh, which have been done in order to create the, the right equations to solve for the unknowns. But for the position analysis, um, it required a increment of increment increase of one degrees. But since the driving input R1 cannot be broken down into those uh, those uh, factors. Theta 2 was chosen as an input variable for this position analysis, and R1 was calculated, and therefore R3 was calculated afterwards. And from there, you can see that the, on the chart that the points for each are Q, P, and S were calculated by their respective X and Y values. And the degrees on the left side of the chart represent the closure angles for the maximum R1 values. For this, a length length of R2 is equal to 20 inches. The 280 degrees is for the minimum R1 length. This this trajectory of point S is uh, is uh, is tracked by using the points of S from the maximum R1 value to the minimum value, and this is specialized especially for the R2 values equal to 20 inches. This is the entire motion of the path, as you can see. It actually shows a circ more of a circular, uh, circular path, which signifies that it begins and ends in the same place, which is which is similar to the uh, increment of one degrees starting at zero degrees and ending at 360 degrees. Those are the x and y values of point S at any point uh, along the path. For the velocity uh, analysis, the loop equation was differentiated from the position uh, equation and it's given by its uh, velocity components using the x and y uh, parts and the input value of R1 can actually be applied in this equation uh, since it was already given and as using the closure angles found for the maximum R1 values for each of the R2 uh, length components 5, 10, 15, 20, and 25 uh, inches you can see the closure angles are given in radians for theta 2 and theta 3 were given. And the velocities uh, were calculated based on those closure angles in the given uh, variables. This is the uh, comparison of the uh, link to an angular acceleration versus the position of R1 for each of the different uh, R2 links uh, of 5, 10, 15, 25, and 30. Um, 
This is the same uh, comparison, but using the link three angular acceleration versus its R1 uh, position. For the acceleration analysis, um, the, the closure equation was further differentiated to give the acceleration components in their x and y. Uh, and the input variable of R1 had a zero uh, acceleration. So it did not affect this equation as, as, as much or any at all. And these closure angles are given for the original position analysis of R2, the, the R2 lengths. And the accelerations are calculated based on those closure angles and the previous uh, calculated uh, velocity and analysis values. Uh, the, this acceleration is uh, similar to the angular acceleration of length 2. But it's, it's, uh, it's uh, compared against its uh, R1 value, which is similar to the length 2 value. It's also done for the length 3 angular acceleration of R1. For in terms of application of mechanism, the aviation industry can utilize the slider crank mechanism in the flaps of the wing and actually controlling and deploying the flaps in a simple and, and easy to fix uh, mechanism. This can also be used in a variable sweep mechanism to actually sweep the wings forward or backwards to actually increase uh, the aerodynamics of the system uh, while in flight. It's also mainly used in the piss and print assembly in the automotive industry. This is the flap uh, configuration of the spider crank. It shows the actual motions when it goes up and down. To conclude, we have found that the slider crank mechanism is the most commonly used mechanism next to the four bar mechanism. It is used for simple case systems where, the, where there are only one degree of freedom. Slider, the slider crank required analysis of the behavior and changes of the mechanism throughout each degree of rotation. Part two of the project required a synthesis of a four bar mechanism of which the coupler link endpoints had to satisfy the relative points A and B as shown. To commence our uh, four bar mechanism synthesis, uh, we utilized these pole position matrix equations for A0 and B0. Afterwards, we plugged in the values, uh, the coordinate values for uh, A0 and B0 into these distance formula equations for R1 through R4. Afterwards, um, uh, in the following slide, it shows the results for the pole positions and the link lengths as shown. For verification of the three positions, the calculated lengths were drawn and assembled in SOLIDWORKS, after which a, a displacement analysis on joints R sub Q and R sub P. Uh, the results of said analysis were tabulated as shown, thus proving the mechanism satisfied the requirements. This is an animated video of our four bar mechanism. To conclude part two, the synthesis of a four bar me mechanism required synthesis, optimization, verification of three positions, and it was verified that the mechanism was indeed a type two mechanism. The application we chose for this mechanism was a double wishbone application which is a tire suspension system that increases the stability of a vehicle. That is the end of our presentation. Thank you.